Dormitibus, Chapter 2, A Nightmare Devoured. So, none of you have actually been in the Everfree Forest? Twilight cast a paranoid glance behind her, as she and her five friends wandered down a lone path that stretched inwards towards the central areas of the forest. Through small talk and even revealing some things that she read about concerning this venom creature, they had come to admit that they'd never set foot anywhere near this dangerous maze of mysteries. Rarity, scoffing as she kept a hand held close to her heart, shivered as she passed by a raunchy-looking plant. Oh heavens, no, just look around, darling. This place is quite dreadful, no? Applejack nodded in agreement as she kept the lead, keeping an eye out for any movement that might intercept them. And this place sure as rain ain't natural. It's not... natural? What do you mean? Rainbow Dash did a quick lap around the group before coming to Twilight's left. This place has had a few rumors buzzing around it, and some are true, but some are so bizarre that you might even laugh at them. She pointed forward. But there ain't a single thing in this forest that works the same as everything else in Equestria. It's like it works off of its own magic. Even the clouds around here move on their own. She made the same shiver Rarity did seconds prior, turning a finger up to the great tuft of pillowy substance as it hovered over them. And believe me when I say that the weather ponies ain't touching those kind of clouds anytime soon. Twilight gave her that. If the forest is so unpredictable, and worked off of magic unknown to the world, who knows what kind of properties linger within. She knew this forest was dangerous just by looking at it from the outside, but now that she was inside its perimeter, she could feel the presence of chaos magic all around her, and maybe even hints of dark magic here and there. No pony would even dare collect samples from a forest that was seemingly alive, especially against its will. Taking exception to the action would be an understatement if Rainbow's words held weight. Well, we shouldn't be here for no more than a night. Once we're done here, we can leave just as quickly. We only need to find the elements of harmony. Rarity looked back at her as they turned on a cliffside, going from a forest setting to some rocky edges. And what about this, um, venom creature you speak? Even if we find these elements and use them to stop that awful mare, what would we do about her? Twilight couldn't really answer her in a way that would reassure the fashionista. Truth is, she was dreading that question, as the last case of a venom attack was dealt with by an extreme amount of offensive magic and a hail of blades and spears. It was a monster that, to many before her, was deemed too risky and too unsafe to the kingdom and had to be killed or subdued on sight. The problem with that solution is Twilight was only a student. Sure, she was learning under the personal tutelage of Princess Celestia, but she knew her limits. She was a talented unicorn, a spellcaster of a variety of powers, but she wasn't a soldier, like her older sister, Gleaming Shield. She may never be. If they went up against Venom now, the oozing monstrosity would tear them all apart in seconds. And speaking of which... The gang all jumped as a large body of the monster slammed down to the side of the cliffs above them, holding a dead rabbit in its jaws. Sucking down the nutrients in its body, the human inside let out a growl as he spat it out. Hunger. Venom sniffed around, looking to and fro as the body parts of the rabbit fell past the girls and down the small mountain. Fluttershy the animal lover that she is gasped when seeing this, almost believing that this corpse was her little angel bunny. She was grateful that it wasn't, but that didn't stop her from fainting and falling over the side of the hill. Applejack tried to catch her, calling out to her as she collapsed over the edge. Fluttershy! Venom turned his head down towards them, hissing as he found a group of victims to feed on. However, seeing the falling pegasus made a part of his mind return to him. A promise held, a virtue kept. Ignoring his hunger, he shifted his targeting gaze to the cream pegasus, launching off to the side of the hill and soaring down towards her. The five conscious mares watched as the beast turned itself, snapping its claw into the side of the hill and slowing its descent. Grabbing on a Fluttershy's tail, the villainous abomination saved her life. His sudden heroism made Twilight more invested in finding out just who was under that gooey mask of hatred and hunger. Her wonder turned to surprise as she was smacked in the face with Fluttershy's body, the mare being thrown back up as Venom leaped off, paying the six mares no further attention as his hunger-intensified senses managed to pick up that glorious sense of the dark mare. Tailing after it, he disappeared in the trees below, as the blue smoke was approaching the old castle in the distance. The inventor's mass and size crashed into the forest floor as he left the sentient horse people behind. With his hunger still prevalent and his senses being overloaded by the smell of that starry-haired entity, he felt no need to feed on those six girls, especially the cream one that he managed to sober up enough to save from falling to her death. Despite being... this, and... Having it to acknowledge whether or not this was real, the human still had a sense of promise, his word kept and his will strong. It was tough enough to keep that hatred at bay for a few seconds and allow him to sedate the unique hunger with it. However, as soon as he was done with his rescue op, the anger returned and he set off again. Sprinting through the forest, the hunger was determined to find the smoke. He felt so close to it, yet so far away. He wanted it. He, he needed it. 
He was going to chase her for as long as he needed to in order to finally feed on something worthy to be called dinner. Of course, with every quest, there were obstacles, and one more stopped him in his tracks as he came out to a clearing. The human tilted his head as he eyed the thing that stopped him. It appeared to be a lion, but without hybrid appendages. The most notable were the scorpion tail and the bat wings. A manticore? The inventor took a step back as the large cat had him in its sights. Not as prey, but as a rival. Flying towards him with a powerful flap of its bat-like wings, the hybrid myth swiped at him with his large claws. Dodging to the side, the monster of hatred wrapped his tendrils around the more natural predator to this forest. He couldn't feed on this morsel. It was too big to be absorbed, so he only had the option of putting it down the old-fashioned way. Keeping his tentacles looped around the cat's neck and arms, another one jabbed through its stomach while they violently twisted and turned, breaking the creature's bones and puncturing a plethora of organs at once. The kill was instant, and he made sure that the feline didn't suffer. He didn't like killing things like this, but when he's in the right mind and his hand is forced, he has the decency to ensure it doesn't feel its oncoming death. Dropping the cat back onto the ground, the maw of the human's outer appearance chittered before his head moved into the direction of the scent. Feeling his stomach throb, the inventor moved and approached another nearby clearing. This one had some sort of ruined stone structure within it. It looked like a castle that had been abandoned for years, perhaps even decades or centuries. He marveled at the fact that something so old was still standing, even if it was taken over by the elements of nature. Sensing the presence of that darkness inside, he lunged onto the side of the structure and made his way up. Nightmare Moon was having an... interesting first night back. She had all but anticipated the moment of her return. Seeing the faces of her subjects looking upon her with terror, she knew her crown meant nothing to them, and as long as they had their precious Sun Princess around, they wouldn't accept her as the alicorn they desired. But with her plans in motion, Celestia Nightmare switched places. She would forever be trapped, alone and watching from afar as Nightmare Moon made the appropriate changes to the kingdom that rejected her. It was all going smoothly, save for the addition of something new. Before she became who she was, she had been around for the incident that was caused by the Canterlot Royal Scientist's new project, simply dubbed Venom. The ooze that was drenched in negativity and amplified to the 10th degree was studied and rigorously experimented on. The hopes that spurred in Celestia and their subjects was to find a way to rid ponies of ever creating such a substance from their magical makeup. Every pony was susceptible, and this Venom was a disease. They made the mistake of treating it as one too. The Venom ooze was not a substance to cure, but to control. Nightmare Moon was one of the few who had been corrupted by this venom, but she was only doused with a drop of the amorphous magic, and thus, was able to control it, despite the effects that it had on her mind. But that... thing, that... Whoever that was within that little village's town hall contained enough hatred, sadness, and apathy to become a creature much darker than Nightmare Moon admitted to be. To an extent, she was still as every bit as benevolent as Celestia, just of a different light. That venom monster that chased her throughout the Everfree Forest was like a wild animal, a relentless hunter that sought to find her with an endless resolve, and she knew what the Marinside wanted. Her focus was not on that suited pony, as every bit of a threat as the venom chasing her was, that ever more present danger to her plans are the artifacts that defeated her, and banished her to the moon the first time. The Elements of Harmony. Before her sat the five ancient stones that held the empowered gems inside. Finally. With these destroyed, my reign over Equestria can begin, and nothing will stand between me and the empty throne. She lifted up her heel, cracking it down onto the floor and drawing a fissure to the five stones. With the ground opening up underneath them, dark jets of blue-tinted magic fired from the crevices, damaging the stones and eventually... <coughs> destroying them. With the shards falling to Nightmare Moon's feet, she grinned ominously, staring up at the moon as she felt a royal adversary staring back. Laughing out into the night, she relished in her victory. Now she was the ruler of Equestria. She was the one ponies would look up. And no one, not even the royal guard, will do or say anything that will- <laughs> Nightmare Moon spun around immediately upon hearing something large land inside the old throne room. Turning and facing the creature she was dwelling her thoughts on, she gave a narrow gaze as the hungry eyes of the venom monster glared back at her. Kill you. Nightmare Moon tensed as her wings flared out as an act of intimidation. She said nothing, for no words nor conversation would slow the beast down. No sense in a monologue over her enemy's defeat if she perishes in the process. Destroy you. There it is! Twilight and the gang finally managed to get off of the rocky hillside after their close encounter with a venom creature. With Fluttershy being carried by Applejack, the five were crossing over a bridge that led down to another platform that stemmed up from the forest floor. Upon it was part of the castle of the two sisters, and it appeared to be the main entrance inside. 
Using their combined efforts to open the doors beyond the rickety bridge, the five stood before a pedestal that had five chambers sticking up from the base. Residue of touched stone was left behind in the cups within, and the whole thing looked to have been left inactive for a long, long time. Applejack set Flutter shut down, motioning to the mechanism. Well, come on now, Twilight, this is what y'all were looking for, wasn't it? Twilight walked to the front of the group, blinking at the machine as something seemed... missing. It wasn't until she thought back to the book that she read about this machine did she realize what it was. The stones... where are the elements of harmony? The other mares perked up, not realizing what was missing either until the Lavender Companion pointed it out. They looked around the room, hoping that they just fell off and rolled somewhere. A bright light, lasting no longer than a second, was emitting from the next tower over. Twilight catching it, doubled back to the window looking up to it. Another flash, this time of a different colored light. That had to be where the elements were. Girls, over there! The others turned to Twilight, looking out the window themselves, before following the unicorn up to a higher level. Fluttershy was being carried again, slowly coming as to where they made their way back onto a passageway from one tower to the next. A short whimper of fear from the height and intimidating decor made Applejack perk up and let the shy Pegasus down. Coaxing her into following them, the six were led to another chamber in the old castle by several flashes of light, all varying in color and intensity. Making their way inside, they stopped almost immediately when the walls on their left were smashed open, Nightmare Moon sailing through the room to the other open window on their right while Venom was hot on her tail. The six friends kept their distance and remained hidden as they took their fight back outside, allowing them space to find the elements of harmony. All right, every pony, look around. Leave no stone unturned. We have to find them, and quickly. This is getting really interesting because it's anyone's guess as to what will happen. Someone might get hurt, or maybe not. Someone could get killed, or maybe not. Who knows? Anywho, let's get on to our very interesting donators. Top donators TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollin', Crazy Killer557, Stu Hex, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, RuneSlice9852, Hunter Norman, Steven Bingham, LineGuard12, and many more powerful people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.